Hi there. Hey, did you, uh, sorry, I wasn't expecting to make a video tonight, but NASA decided to drop a nuke on a Friday evening. Uh, SpaceX has been selected as the option A contractor for the Artemis program human landing system. So what does that mean? Uh, SpaceX's Starship vehicle is going to be the lander that brings Americans, people back to the lunar surface, the first woman and first person of color to the moon. It was up against the Blue Origin led national team lander and the Dynetics lander. And before I get into the details, everybody, this video is gonna be really surface level. This announcement just came out today. I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of observations and things coming out in the press over the next few days and few weeks that will add some more color to the story. But I just felt compelled to make a video highlighting some of the big news of the day. And uh, this is great news for everyone. This is now going to be, according to my calculations, the one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh contract SpaceX has to send payloads and human beings to the moon. We have Dragon XL for the Deep Space Gateway. We have the Mastin lander. We have the Intuitive Machines lander. We have the Astrobotic lander. We have the Dear Moon mission. We have the iSpace lander. And now the human landing system contract. And this contract requires there to be an uncrewed test mission. Um, so it looks like we're gonna have two lunar Starship flights from this. And also the Dragon XL mission, that is uh, a resupply mission for the Deep Space Gateway. So we'll be seeing several of them uh, at first launching on the Falcon Heavy. This is quite a bombshell of an announcement that I don't think most people in the space community were expecting to happen today. And what was announced today is also not really expected. I think everybody knew that SpaceX would be a contender because of the price point they were offering with Starship. But a lot of space insiders were really expecting the Dynetics lander to be in the lead for several reasons. But the cost really sounded like something that was the one aspect outside of the technology demonstrations that SpaceX has been doing with Starship being the one of the main points for NASA to be selecting that. Primarily because they didn't have the budget to pick the two landers that they were initially planning to get in the Option A contract. You see, NASA, ever since the days of the Space Shuttle, has always been looking for adding redundancy to everything they can. Because God forbid, if one of the systems goes down, you're like, you're out. So they always want to have backups. That's why the, the, re, the commercial resupply program has multiple boosters, has multiple uh, cargo ships. Uh, the commercial crew program has Dragon and Starliner. So it was really expected for NASA to try to adapt at least two landers for this option A uh, program, but they didn't have the money. So they want where the money followed. SpaceX and Starship. And one of the reasons why SpaceX came in at the lowest bar was because they had offered to pay for half of the testing and development costs for the Lunar Starship program. This is something that the national team lander and the Dynetics lander did not have in their offer. So NASA was gonna be paying the full boat for that program. Now you gotta put yourself in SpaceX's shoes. Their goal is to get to Mars. They want boots on Mars. They wanna colonize Mars, okay. Great. It can't be all on the back of Elon. I know there are developing these private systems, you know, Starlink private missions through Dear Moon, Inspiration4, etc., to help monetize SpaceX even further to help execute their big picture Starship plans. There is a lot to be said about actually having a system that can get boots on the moon safely. And there's a lot of technology that they are going to develop for this lunar mission that is directly applicable to the Mars missions. So if you are one of these people who is Mars first, well, too bad. This is going to get you actually to Mars probably faster than without. So now NASA is gonna be supplementing the development costs of Starship. So with every step closer they get to the moon, you're also getting one step closer to Mars through SpaceX. So this is really, really excellent news. Now NASA was looking at three major factors when they were trying to select which system they were gonna go with. One being the technical approach, the second being the total evaluated price, and the third being the management approach of each program. There's actually a technical report that NASA put out today that goes over many more details than what I'll be able to cover in this video. So if you have any questions, I recommend you go and read this report. Uh, it is a NASA report. It's not exactly colorful, but it gets to the point. Now, outside of costs, there were actual technical reasons that the national team lander and the Dynetics Alpaca lander were not selected uh, to be part of this program. 
When you go to look at the national team lander, uh, NASA did not feel that the design was really mature enough and they didn't have confidence in the propulsion system. The national team lander also appeared to completely remove the full up test option and they were planning on doing their full up test with crew on board, which is was a big no-no for NASA. They wanted to see this system tested soup to nuts without crew on board, uh, and that was not part of their offer. Uh, the Dynetics lander actually had, a, they had some technical hurdles in terms of uh, some of the refueling that NASA was concerned about. You know, that system was going to require uh, lunar refueling. Um, but you know, that wasn't, that re wasn't really the killer here. Uh, the main killer was that it was too heavy. Uh, the onboard propulsion system in its current design of the lander was not going to be able to support the descent and ascent of the lander. So it was kind of pointless. And NASA wants to make sure that there's some margin here so that if the lander does need to get heavier, the propulsion system can support it. Now, it's not to say that the lander can't get lighter. I'm sure it certainly can with future design iterations and uh, maybe changing materials and things of that nature. But in what they proposed to NASA, it was too heavy, and they were, NASA wanted that problem solved. So for those reasons, they were out. Now, SpaceX's Starship did have drawbacks that NASA was concerned about, but I'll get to them in a second. Uh, I'll just highlight some of the positives that NASA focused on, one of them being the large payload capacity for Starship. NASA knew a single lander that they'd be able to put a wide variety of payloads, uh, you know, rovers, science equipment, various other awkwardly shaped supplies on Starship and it wouldn't really be a problem. Starship was also offering four astronauts to the lunar surface, not two, they're offering four. Starship also has a significantly larger propellant capacity than what the national team and the Dynetics landers were offering. So there's a lot of built-in redundancy in that Starship lander where if things weren't going right on landing, there, there's, not, there's plenty of margin with fuel to call an abort and go back to lunar, lunar orbit where the margins with the other landers were there but much smaller. SpaceX's design also has an aspect of using excess propellant to help the crew sustain living longer on the lunar surface, largely being liquid oxygen, I'm assuming. SpaceX is also saying that this mission can be up to seven days on the surface, so I'm sure that this technology is playing into that. I actually had the opportunity in 2019 to ask former NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine how long he was hoping for the Artemis III mission to last on the surface. And he basically told me as long as it takes for people to come off the lander, say we're here, do some science, and leave. Like, it was a pretty low bar. And this is kind of blowing that out of the water. Can you imagine what potentially four astronauts can do in one week on the lunar surface? Like, it's an opportunity we never had before. And this is on, like, the first mission. Now, I have my doubts I would actually get there. That is what SpaceX is proposing. They may go for the more conservative two on the first mission, but the fact that the Lunar Starship right now is planning for four is a massive benefit. This Starship design is gonna require multiple refuelings in low Earth orbit before getting to the moon. So the plan right now is to get this Starship into low Earth orbit and have it dock at least twice, it appears from the language here, with tanker Starships to refuel that Starship and then send it in a TLI maneuver to lunar orbit. Once it's in lunar orbit, Orion will launch on SLS and later rendezvous with Starship around the moon. The crew will then transfer to Starship and go to the lunar surface. The long-term plans are that Starship will dock with the Deep Space Gateway and the crew will rendezvous uh, on board Gateway. Uh, but for this first mission, it will be a direct dock between Orion and Starship. So look everybody, SLS and Starship are actually really good friends. Lunar Starship will also have a pressurized cargo section and a unpressurized cargo section. And from the render appears the unpressurized section will be below the crew quarters. So NASA will have the ability to star store cargo in an unpressurized section, which does have a lot of benefits that I'm not really gonna get into in this video, not the point of this video. Lunar Starship will also have two airlocks on board, which adds a lot of redundancy in the event of an emergency. And each one of these airlocks will have to have their own life support systems, which now adds two extra safe havens and for the crew in the in the case of emergency once starship gets to lunar orbit it'll have the ability to loiter there for up to 100 days and wait for orion to get there this is 10 days more than the minimum of 90 that nasa was looking for and adds flexibility to nasa's launch timeline for the crew 
Now, some drawbacks that NASA did highlight in this plan are things that they feel that SpaceX will be able to outgrow as the development of Starship continues. Uh, one of them being the complicated propulsion system that Starship currently has with the Raptor engines. Um, they don't really, they're not really concerned about them clearing things up, but they did highlight that as something that they need to work through. They did also acknowledge that this system does require several launches prior to Starship being ready to go. Uh, you have launch of Starship, at least two, two tanker flights, uh, we're assuming at least two tanker flights uh, to get it ready for crew around the moon. But one benefit is that these tanker missions are gonna happen in low Earth orbit. For instance, the other landers, they're planning on doing these refuel rendezvous around lunar orbit. So NASA found this as a plus to do these rendezvous in low Earth orbit. NASA does highlight that the 30 meter elevator is not really ideal, but something that they feel like SpaceX will be able to figure out. Um, something I do have concerns about is if the elevator breaks, you have to get up 30 meters into the sky to get back into your spacecraft. I'm assuming that they'll have some backup systems involved, like maybe like a rope or a ladder to climb up. I mean, it's 1 6th G. It's not going to be super easy in a spacesuit, um, but I'm sure in an emergency situation, they can figure something out or maybe like a hand crank on the elevator. Uh, it'll be a long way to go, but if it's life or death on the moon, you're going to figure things out. Now, some problems with the multiple launch approach, regardless of the lander, is... You need multiple launches to go well and the refueling to go well and also the final burn to the moon. So there's just so many extra logistical steps, but if they can pull it off, the rewards sound like they'll be great. So in the end, there's a lot of ways that Starship ended up winning this contract. Uh, it is, in a lot of ways, a superior lander, a much more complicated lander, a much bigger lander um, that has its own set of risks that go with it. But NASA was willing to go with it. Uh, SpaceX has now for more than a decade been building a really strong relationship with NASA and proving that they can deliver on their promises. NASA also feels good that Starship is going to be building off a lot of their heritage hardware and proven software uh, from the Dragon and Falcon 9 program. So they know SpaceX is building off of systems they know work and work well. Now I know this video is a, like a really glowing report of the Starship system and I don't really dive into the plus and minuses of the national team and the Dynatics lender, but I highly recommend you look at the report in the description. It goes into a lot of details and it's just gonna raise your general space IQ. So this is not the end all be all lander. Uh, this is the option A lander, which will get us back on the lunar surface and test out these systems. There will be an option B contract, which will hopefully be awarded to multiple landing systems that will allow us to have a more sustainable presence on the lunar surface, but this is a nonetheless an exciting announcement. So if you made it this far, I really hope you liked this video. Uh, I know this was really raw and unscripted, but this is a new format I figured I'd try and uh, see if you all liked it. So anyways, thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments if you wanna see more raw videos like this and uh, I'll catch y'all later. And subscribe if you want. We're almost at 100,000 and I got a big plan in store to celebrate. So thanks for hanging guys and I'll talk to you later. All right, bye.